Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be concluding uh, this uh, unit that we've been doing with factoring and talking about some advanced factoring techniques. Now, if you haven't already done so, you want to make sure that you go back to watch some of those previous videos I've created we, where we talked about how to uh, factor, for example, a sum and a difference of cubes, where we talked about how to uh, factor a difference of two squares, uh, and where we talked about how to factor uh, trinomials, because we're going to be using a lot of those different uh, uh, techniques a as we talk about um, these next couple of techniques and these advanced uh, factoring techniques. Um, we're actually going to take this lesson, or I'm going to take this lesson and break it up into three separate videos. This first video, we're going to be looking at this first technique called grouping. And then we're going to be looking at a second technique called chunking, which, yes, that is a technique. And you'll see what that's all about in the next video. And then we're going to follow that up by looking to see how we can tie this all together to um, use factoring to come up with all the real solutions or all the solutions, both non-real uh, non and real solutions, for a polynomial. So again, let's start by looking now at how to use this technique called grouping. So using this technique, we're going to do exactly like it sounds. We're going to group together some terms. So we're going to start by, so we're, and again, this has four terms as opposed to what we've looked at dealing with a trinomial with three terms. So what you're going to do is we're faced with the problem with four terms. We're going to group together the first two terms and the last two terms. Now look at what I did, though. It's very important that you include the symbol here with the third term. You include that symbol with that third term, whether it's a plus or a minus. It's very, very critical that you do that. So let's start with these first two terms. We're going to look for the greatest common factor between these two. And I can notice that the uh, greatest common factor between t cubed and th uh, 3t squared would be just t squared. And when I do that, I'm left with uh, t minus 3. So if I factor out a t squared, that leaves me with t minus 3. Now let's look at the next uh, pair of numbers there. I'm going to look for the greatest common factor between the 4 and the 12. Now here's a trick, though. Anytime your first term is negative, you must include a negative when you factor this out. So whatever the first number is, if it's uh, positive or negative, that tells you what your sign is going to be when we factor it out. So this is a negative 4, so I'm going to factor out a negative. And it just so happens that the greatest common factor between 4 and 12 is a 4, so we're going to factor out a negative 4. Now watch what happens. When I factor out a negative 4 from negative 4t, that leaves me with just t. When I factor out a negative 4 from 12, well, 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. So now what I want to do is I want to see, well, what's between what I have here, what is a common factor? And I see that this first term has t minus 3, as does this second term here. So I'm going to factor out a t minus 3. And when I factor that out, I'm left with t squared minus 4. Now we want to make sure that we factor these completely. The t minus 3, that can't be factored completely. But I notice that t squared minus 4, that is a difference of two squares. So that factors down more. Now I want to make sure that I include this t minus 3, so we don't want to forget that. But t squared minus 4, that factors down to be t plus 2, t minus 2. And that cannot be factored down anymore. So that is your final answer. So why don't you guys take a minute and try this next one on your own. So again, start by uh, grouping together the first two terms and your last two terms. Look for the greatest common factor from those first two and the greatest common factor from the second two. And hopefully what will happen is you should have, in parentheses, the same piece for both of those. And so you'd factor that piece out. And whatever you're left with, like in this, the t squared minus 4, we would put that in parentheses. And then always check to see if it can be factored down any further. And this one, like we had, factored down to be t plus 2, t minus 2. And then we would include that t minus 3 that we factored out. So why don't you guys try this next example on your own. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Well, let's check to see how you did here. So again, you should have started by grouping together the first two terms and the last two terms. Again, it's very important where you put your parentheses. Make sure with these last two terms that you include this sign here with those last two terms. So now we look at those first two terms and find the greatest common factor. Now, you want to make sure that it is the greatest, the largest common factor in order for this to work. And so 9 is the greatest common factor as far as the 27 and 45 is concerned. 
And between the variables, x squared would be the largest variable we could factor out. So we factor out a 9x squared. That leaves us with 3x minus 5. Now look at the next set of parentheses. Between those two terms, again, since we start out with a minus, we have to factor out a minus. And between the 12 and 20, we have a common factor, greatest common factor of 4. And so I factor out a negative 4. Well, negative 12 divided by negative 4 is a positive 3, so it'll be 3x. 20 divided by negative 4 is a negative 5. So again, notice that in parentheses here we have 3x minus 5. So you'd factor that out. Now when you factor that out, you're left with the 9x squared minus 4. So that's what you have in parentheses here as well. So we'd have 3x minus 5 times 9x squared minus 4. That 9x squared minus 4, you should notice that that's a difference of two squares. And that factors down to be 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. And if you've forgotten how to factor a difference of squares or how to recognize a difference of two squares, you want to make sure that you go back and watch the video so you can see that. But that is how we use this technique of grouping. Now in the next video, we're going to learn about another vec uh, technique called chunking. So with that, uh, we'll end this video. So make sure to watch that next video so you can use that other advanced technique.